In today's video, we are going to review a mirror-mounted dashcam Discovery H612 made by Vantop. Originally, I bought this dashcam for the rear view camera because my F-150 can be hard to drive through small parking lots and to back into tight spaces, especially at night. And the reason I went with a mirror mounted camera, it doesn't add any more clutter to your front windshield and is very inconspicuous. Front camera records 2.5K and has a field of view of 170 degrees. And the rear camera records full HD with a field of view of 160 degrees, which makes it just 30 degrees short of having a full 360 view. So whether you've been eyeing this device for a while or never heard of mirror-mounted dash cams before, this video should help you decide whether this camera is the right choice for you. Vantop has four models available on the market with this particular one featuring things like voice control, GPS tracking, full touchscreen, waterproof rear view camera, loop recording, night vision and parking monitor. But let's start from the top and look at what comes in the box. The first thing we find is the mirror screen. It is almost 12 inches wide, 3 inches tall and about 5 eighths thick. At the top we find ports for the GPS sensor, micro SD card, AV port for the rear view camera and the USB port we plug our charger into. It is a mini B receptacle that we can also use to connect to a computer. At the bottom we find the microphone and an on off button. And at the back there is a reset opening just in case the device freezes. And the camera, currently covered with some protective film, has some swivel to it obviously to make sure we are pointing at the road and not at the sidewalk or the sky. Next we find the rear view camera. In case you want to know where you can fit it on your car, it makes a 7 8 by 7 8 square, about 1 and a quarter inch long, with a 1 and a half inch wide mounting plate. This is how it moves. You can disconnect the camera from the wiring, which works very nice for installation purposes. There is also this red wire that connects to your backup light to let the dash cam know when you're backing up so it can change the view accordingly. You don't absolutely have to connect it, but it's a nice feature to have. We also get two sticky pads with some screws for a more solid mounting. We have the charger that plugs into a regular 12 volt cigarette lighter socket. A GPS sensor to have record of the speed you are going. Probably a good way to fight speeding tickets. A couple different size mounting straps to attach your dash cam to the original mirror. Some card with customer service numbers. And an owner's manual that comes in three languages. I won't say anything about the French and Spanish, but English version is good and easy to follow. There is also a little lens cleaning cloth and a plastic tool to tuck the wires behind the headliner. Installation process is very well explained in the manual and I will have a video on how to do it step by step. But to give you a general idea, plug in a formatted micro SD card of up to 128 gigabytes, class 10 or higher. The dash cam attaches to the mirror with the rubber bands. There are three wires that plug into it, charger, plugs in a 12 volt socket, GPS gets mounted on the dash by the windshield and rear view camera can be installed either inside or outside the vehicle. You can run the wires behind the headliner to avoid a messy look. Rear view camera has a red wire that you can tap into the backup lights so that when you put your transmission in reverse, the screen will automatically switch to a backup mode placing safety markers on the screen and changing the field of view. If you want to learn more about installation, again, I will have a separate video dedicated just to that. Now let's talk about basic functions. What does this camera have to offer? First, on most cars, 12 volt sockets get power when you turn the key on, which means when you start the car, the dash cam will turn on and start recording automatically. When you turn the key off, the camera will stop receiving power from the socket and turn off, entering a parking mode. 
In a parking mode, the dash cam stays off, but if someone hits your car, the dash cam will pick up the vibration and wake up, using its own internal 500 milliamp battery to record a 20 second emergency video from both cameras. Emergency videos are stored in a separate folder and will not get erased during normal loop recording. Loop recording simply means when the memory card gets full, the dash cam will erase the oldest video in the folder and replace it with the newest one. Another case where the dash cam will save an emergency video is in a driving mode. Like if you get in an accident while driving, the dash cam will pick up the vibration and save an emergency video. And you can adjust the sensitivity of the impact sensor for both driving and parking modes. Now coming back to the power sockets. If your power socket stays on all the time, even with the key off, the camera will stay on as well and continue recording. The downside of that, it will drain your battery eventually. And I may make a separate video on how to address this issue. Now another way you can turn this dash cam on and off is by pressing and holding the on off button. Single tap turns the screen on and off. Holding the button for 3 seconds, turn the whole dash cam on and off. Now, when the dash cam comes on, it will show you either the image from the rear view camera or from both front and back. And you can choose in the settings which image you want to appear by default when you start the car. You can also swipe your finger to the left to change what camera you want to see on the screen, front, back or both. Since the whole image doesn't fit on the screen, you can scroll the left side of the screen up or down to adjust what part of the image you want to see. By scrolling up and down on the right side of the screen, you can adjust brightness. If you swipe to the right, you can play the videos saved in the library. As you can see, it is a very easy and intuitive interface with all the main functions at your fingertips. If you tap on the screen, basic info and options will appear. You can turn on and off the microphone, take a picture, stop or start recording, enter the settings menu, and save an emergency video by pressing the lock button. You can also enter the settings menu by swiping down. There are three rows of functions here. I will cover each function in a separate video, but among basic functions you can adjust date, time, language, sound volume, calibrate your GPS sensor, and enable speech recognition. Here is a list of all the commands this dash cam can execute. Now, to transfer files over to your computer, you can either connect your laptop to the dash cam through a USB cable or remove the memory card and plug it into your computer. You will have a set of folders, normal, emergency, and photo for both front and back cameras. Very likely, you will have to install an HEVC codec to view the video files on your computer. In my case, Windows found it for 99 cents, so I installed it and it works perfect. There is also a video player in the folder that you can install on your computer that can play footage and also show the route you traveled. Now speaking of footage, here is a few examples. During the day, front and back cameras, you can see it's almost a 360 view. You can set your dash cam to record files in 264 or 265 compression format. In case you can't see it on your device, 265 seems less pixelated, has sharper image and quicker adapts to light changes. Here is footage in the rain. Even though the rear camera is placed outside, it does just fine. Here is a comparison of before dark and right after sunset. Comparing to a regular camera, the image is pretty well lit as you can see. Here is what twilight looks like. Depending on where you place the rear view camera, you may have some interference with headlights behind you. We went for a stargazing tour that started at 9 p.m. and ended at 11. So this is what footage looks like in complete darkness with just the tail lights on. And here's the front. The sound recorded is very good, no complaints there. Show front camera. Okay. Show rear camera. Okay. Turn off screen. Okay. 
So yeah, this is how it sounds. And this is how it works. Pretty nice and convenient way to control your mirror. Almost feels like you have a friend to talk to. Now, let's answer a few common questions. First, can I turn off the screen and use it like a regular mirror? Yes, absolutely. In fact, that's what I do most of the time during the day. I have the screen off and treat it as a regular mirror. The screen makes the reflection a little darker, but you can see everything just fine. The only time I use the screen is for backing up and driving at night. Second, some people have complained that during the day, if the screen is on, you see both the image on the screen and natural reflection from the road. Two things you can do to solve this, increase the brightness on the screen and you know how you can flip your mirror up to reduce direct glare from the headlights behind you? With this screen, I adjust the mirror in the up position and if it is too bright outside, I flip the lever down pointing the mirror at the back seats instead of the road, which drastically reduces the glare. Next, some people have complained about memory card problems. Make sure to use a fast card. Remember, there are two cameras recording at the same time. That's a lot of information being written on the card. The manufacturer recommends class 10 or higher. I use one step higher than class 10. I'll have a link in the description. You can check it out. So my final thoughts. Am I willing to trade my simple and plain yet unfailing rear view mirror for an electric device fitting right over it? Yes, yes and yes. With a 160 degree rear camera field of view and night vision plus having everything recorded, this is such a great addition to any vehicle on the road. Overall, Quality of this camera is good, it's not cheaply made, especially for this price point. Installation is fairly easy and is well explained in the manual. The software feels a little outdated but works fine. Night vision is very good and when you're backing up, the field of view is so much better than your regular mirror. So all in all, I highly recommend getting this dash cam to anyone looking to improve the safety of their driving as well as having evidence in case of a car accident or any incident occurring around your vehicle. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Links to all the products will be in the description. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Good luck and take care.